So we move to the next session, which is panel discussion. The topic is digital citizenship. Set, me set and meal goals for responsible use of technology. For this, I would like to call Mr. Alman Shah, principal at the Sanskar Valley School, Bhopal. Mr. Alman Shah. Mr. Raghu Pandey. Mr. Pandey is the founder of iBranch.in, a web service which provides knowledge sharing portals to schools and colleges. He has BE in computer science from Barkatullah University, Bhopal. It has been nine years since Raghu is training students and teachers to make the best use of internet in education. He is the author of India only book on internet maturity and digital citizenship. And the moderator is Mr. Utkash Lokesh. Good afternoon. We were, we were supposed to have three panelists for this session, as you might have seen in the agenda. But uh, unfortunately, Mr. Kalra has uh, not been able to make it because of uh, last moment travel issues. Uh, I hope to finish it, uh, obviously, within time. I will straight away begin with uh, Raghu. And uh, I would like to begin uh, the talk by highlighting you highlighting the various reasons, Raghu, why uh, digital citizenship is an essential skill for students. Uh, we have got less time. So uh, let me uh, begin uh, with my uh, strongest assertion of today that uh, we have talked about a lot of technology into education. Uh, if you want to uh, prioritize what you want to do about technology in your school, give the first priority to have a digital citizenship and internet maturity program in place. Then everything else can come in. I know it's a very uh, debatable assertion, but uh, that's what the purpose of me coming here is. The reason being, learning happens through five senses, and you have no control over those five senses of your students. They are already learning. They are already deep into the technology, the internet waters. So even if you have a full-fledged, intense BYOD, bring your own device program in your school, you, ha you are doing it very, very late. Those kids are already into the information ocean called internet, deep into it. And even with the BYOD program well controlled uh, uh, by uh, uh, your organization, the content that you're delivering over those uh, channels, the content that you're de delivering over uh, portals like the ones we are talking about today, uh, the other larger part of the internet where kids are visiting is uh, casting a much stronger impression on, the, on those kids' minds. So telling them how to make the best use of the internet, how to avoid the negative effects of the internet, and how to leverage internet for whatever success they want to achieve in life should be first priority and then yes, uh, the other programs of technology can be uh, used to, you know, uh, improve the school experience. Have I said the tone correct? I, I guess uh, definitely, and I would uh, request Mr. Saha to follow it up uh, with how he is doing it, uh, maybe. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I've been listening since morning, and of course, if you permit me, I'll just take 30 seconds out of the topic. Sure. We educators, I am a teacher by heart, by profession, I got the admin cap of principal trip for last 15 years. You cannot replace a teacher in the education system. I'll just quote something, maybe it will differentiate. Education, educational technology, it can just help you. Prestige in life comes only when you have done something well. Honor in life comes when somebody feels you have done something well. The first one, if you consider as the part of the educational technology, your teacher remains with honor, and it will always remain there. Probably this session is going to bridge the gap in terms of digital citizenship. How many of you know about the software or use the software WordPerfect any time in your life? OK? Couple of us of generation. That's the first software I learned when I was typing my thesis. For the first time, I, I was using my computer. I learned it. But today, we have gone far ahead, and the this generation, what some of you are talking about, 
they are the technology native students they are the technology native children in that sense what we have been doing in the school we have integrated the digital citizenship as a part of the ict curriculum and these are the 10 points which we are teaching them within the curriculum first understanding web 2.0 whatever we are talking about web 1.0 that's the past it's all sharing early it didn't take place like that how to create and share digital content that's the second part of the curriculum mature way of social networking they are all facebook teach them how to do it basics of professional networking they will require it for uh, one of the speakers who was 20 from iit graduate he requires it right now and the children will be requiring it even before that online forum discussion skilled what you are talking about flint or you talk about edmodo you require it there blogging skills for self expression how to search knowledge online sir you have been talking about there's a gentleman who was talking how to eliminate teach them when how why to search the website like that they will get the answer which one which website to follow what are the ocws open course words or we have been talking about mwcs since morning how to be self how to be safe online and the most important part there is no more cvs the paper cvs which will be available in future while we are applying for anywhere else it's already being prepared unknown to you it's called online reputation you have to teach them that they must know how to manage your online reputation ladies and gentlemen let me tell you something whatever you post today online about yourself it's public since that point it cannot be private anymore so your online reputation is being jotted down by the future employer and they know exactly what type of language you use what you are talking about throughout the day what is your friend circle how do you spend your time and they have already done the selection procedure the screening has been done because i hope i have given you the first fundamentals thank you absolutely the the 10 points you mentioned i i, I applauded for that I, I seriously felt that that was very important to be highlighted i guess so Raghu, how do you define internet maturity? You, you mentioned that digital citizenship and internet maturity, but what is your definition for that? If time would have permitted, I could have given my, uh, my favorite definitions and explanations, but it doesn't. Uh, let me very briefly uh, give an idea of what internet maturity is. We all agree that children of today are digital natives, yes. But as beautifully uh, said by one of my friends in Australia, uh, Mr. Casper Peters, he says they are digital natives, yes, but all of them are really big digital naives. And you cannot, you, if, if you think that being internet savvy and being internet mature is the same thing, you are badly mistaken. So they are ex they excel at uh, using technology but to use technology for what purpose and giving priority priority to the purpose and then to the device and the means that is what maturity is all about okay. and there are uh, there are certain uh, factors uh, there are certain topics uh, as uh, Dr. Saha has uh, shared, when they are taught in that sequence, maturity comes in. The first being, uh, if, if they realize that the world today, the online world today is, uh, the jargon is web 2.0, it's not a technology, it's the state of affairs how the world is online. It is different from what it used to be 15 years back. It, uh, just one example I'm going to share and then I'm going to leave it for people to explore it later. Uh, the maturity uh, comes in from the fact that if they are realizing that Web 2.0 was not existing 15 years back, which means they have today, whatever they see on internet could be from a layman, could be from anybody with any intentions. So first of all, they should be very sure before absorbing anything from uh, internet. That is. Uh, Point number one. Point number two, they themselves have the power of sharing anything what they can with the larger world. So uh, from this point on, and as you start progressing, uh, gaining skills to create digital content, uh, skills to share it online, 
professional networking, social networking, online discussion forums, blogging, and right up to building up to uh, online reputation, it peaks at, at, at that level. Once a student, if you're confident that this guy uh, is capable of planning his or uh, his, his online reputation well, that is when we can see that, okay, now uh, he can be trusted with uh, going into the uh, internet deep. So uh, it begins from realization of web, what is Web 2.0, the, the, the kind of world that they're living in, and it peaks at planning of their online reputation and uh, be acting mature enough not to, you know, uh, hamper it. So, but Mr. Saha, how do you, you, like, how do you frame it in your school? Like, how do you spread it in the community about the importance of the same? Well, as I was telling you that we have done it as a part of the curriculum. So we know exactly if per week we are getting three lessons. They are the topics to be taught. We have mapped it throughout the year as a part of the ICT curriculum. But if you look, ultimately at the end of the day, you are helping the telecommunication department. You are helping the police, cybercrime. If you are making the children aware of these things, in future probably their role or their work will become slightly easier and children will not be falling into the trap. And also, through the children, you are teaching your parents. That's exactly what you are doing to the community if you teach them digital citizenship at this age. If you want to know what exactly the precaution, maybe I can come back afterwards, it's up to you. <laughs> so, Raghu, Raghu, you mentioned about this uh, when, when we met and I would like you to uh, focus on, on the common myths that that people have uh, that have with respect to digital citizenship and internet maturity in schools, basically. So, what what do you uh, think the common myths are uh, when they talk about having it in the, uh, you can say, in the form of a workshop or something? Uh, right. Uh, I will only talk about two myths today. The first uh, being uh, our kids are quite internet savvy. I already mentioned it in my last talk. Our kids are quite internet savvy, so I don't think uh, we need a digital citizenship or internet maturity program. They are already very experienced with that. Uh, that is myth number one. Uh, I already proved it's not so uh, when I was talking last time. The second is this thing, uh, or we can make our students internet mature or uh, mature digital citizens uh, by uh, organizing few workshops. Uh, if you think that few workshops can help your students become internet mature, uh, it's like can they become mature communicators by organizing a few workshops for English, let's say even 10 workshops a year. Think how they have been practicing the language of English and at what stage they go and become mature communicator. I guess from nursery to class 12, and then, the, uh, then you are confident that, okay, now when they move on outside this campus, they might be mature communicators. So that is, ideally, that should have been the weightage given to digital citizenship and internet maturity. But uh, as we speak, this is, an, uh, this is work in progress. This is an experiment that we are doing. So, uh, and we are here to share our experience of the struggle that we have uh, uh, started. And we, you know, encourage you also to, you know, avoid uh, falling into the trap of these myths and uh, think about a serious program for DCIM. The, you, you, you were talking about implementation in the school, but what, what brought you to the decision that this is, this should be a part? And, and did you, like, how, how often have you listened about uh, cases of cyberbullying, maybe in your school or nearby or in your community? Well. More than the teachers, the students use the internet. They are using it much more. And there have been cases, it, I don't know whether anyone could help me out telling us that, okay, there is a statistics available in terms of cyberbullying in India as such. Worldwide, if you look, roughly the figure goes to 35 to 40 percent of the children, they are under this threat or they have reported that cyber, being cyberbullied. 50 percent of the children, they do not report to anyone either to parent or to the teacher, those are the cases. So I cannot tell confidently that in my school, if there has been a case of cyberbullying, they have already reported to us. But there are cases when the children were, they fell into the trap 
and they came up and they asked for the solution. I'm asking one very simple question. Whenever you are surfing the net, something pops up and there is a cross in the corner. Many a time, you have clicked that cross to stop it. You know, there are some cases where even clicking that, you may fall into the trap. There is a way to dealing that. Now, these tips of the educations, we didn't have it. Unless we teach them, actually there is a lot of negativity while you are going through. They must know these are the negativity and then take out the positive essence of internet maturity. That's the reason for which we took the decision. It should be a part of the curriculum. Let them learn it. They cannot avoid it in their life. Better let them teach that and let them go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, we, I, I think we, uh, what I'll do after this conference as well is like we had an interview series uh, done with school leaders about digital citizenship. I'll, I'll probably share that link to you. Uh, in, in that context, Raghu, I just wanted to uh, bring that question up. Uh, whose responsibility it is, according to you, to help kids gain knowledge? Because there were various perspectives on this, so I would like uh, your perspective as well on this question. Whose responsibility uh, is it to teach uh, kids about digital citizenship or about being uh, about becoming mature digital citizens and internet mature? Uh, who are the stakeholders? Who 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 at the end is going to get benefited apart from the student himself or herself? First, of course, parents. Second, school. Then, as Sir has uh, mentioned hugely telecom companies, the cybercrime department uh, of the police, and the IT department of our uh, country, uh, whose uh, hopes of successful Digital India program rests on what we are talking about right now. Uh, however, I said first parents, then school. Practically, it should be first school, because you are talking about responsibility. Who should teach this? First school, why? Because Digital citizenship today is a life skill indeed. All aspects of your life depend upon internet today, right? Remove internet from your life today and you might get stuck at a lot of places. So becoming internet mature is a life skill certainly, so parents should teach it. However, the even bigger impact of digital citizenship and internet maturity is on the education of the child. If school doesn't take initiative of uh, making uh, students internet mature, the education of the child is going to badly, badly get affected. The, it, the, the student could even be you know, uh, handicapped at the end of uh, uh, class 12 if internet maturity is not taught to him or her. So the first responsibility is with schools, uh, the second with parents, and third, these three people can decide amongst themselves, the cybercrime department, the telecom, and the government of India. These five, people, these five are the stakeholders, I must say. So obviously the collaboration between these stakeholders would be a yeah, key the thing. The collaboration must be there, yeah, definitely. So I would, I would like to open the floor if, if someone has questions uh, for the panelists, specifically to uh, digital citizenship and internet maturity. What's the right age to begin this education? I think I have taken a lot of help from Mr. Pandey. He has implemented in my school, so let him answer this. That would be better. Though we have implemented class 6 upward, but just a couple of days back I had requested him, Raghu, we want a session for classes 2, 3, 4 and 5. I'm giving the example why I had to take the decision. There's firewall. They clicked something. The names of the sites came. It didn't open further. But it's important for us to teach a student of class 3 also what is safe and what is unsafe. Raghu, if you could answer that specifically. Ma'am, even uh, we are also learning at this stage. So what I'm uh, sharing is only an experience. Uh, ideally, the right age should be when the child touches the touch screen and starts exploring. But we cannot uh, you know, push a maturity education into the child at the age of three, typically two and three when uh, kids start exploring technology. Uh, why sixth? I have no good uh, answer to that. Sir has already asked me to create something for third, fourth. So and fourth. I, I think even even in the uh, uh, like one of the one of the interviews, I don't know if Gary is still here. So, but in one of his interviews, he mentioned that the the cases of uh, cyberbullying and those kind of things that 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 has uh, 
that increased when you reach middle school. So that's what he mentioned, even uh, from his experience and surveys done. So I, I don't know if that adds on to a, one of the reasons. It does, it does. See, uh, maybe if I come back to this place next year, I would say uh, third is the, class three is the right age to begin this. But today, uh, I, I would say uh, fifth and sixth is the right time when schools can take this initiative. You never know, ma'am. You never know, ma'am. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, the whole curriculum has been designed like that. What they are learning in class 6 and what they are going to learn at the end of class 10 is completely different. They are going in a progressive manner. And by the time today's children of class 6, when they go to class 10, probably we have to invent something else because the technology will go further. That time, ma'am, you had a question. Yes. So, being younger, uh, they are getting benefited more, and since they move up, upwards to grade six onwards and all, they are actually after implementing it, they are getting more benefit about it, and they are becoming more, uh, uh, more you can say, secure or. Uh, a good digital responsible person. Ma'am, you are absolutely correct. We have got only one cyber law in the country. 17th of October 2000, it was implemented. Adopted from UN. And if you look at the threat, there are two ways there are cyber threats. One, it's to the computer. It could be hacking. It could be virus or worm attack like that. The second one, computer is being used as a medium. Okay? That could be for the purpose of terrorism, it could be for fraud in the bank account, it could be for pornography, it could be for anything else. Now you have to teach them because they are using the computer thing. I borrow something from what uh, Mr. Pandey has written in his book, first car secret location, F-A-S-T, C-A-R, secret location. If it goes for firewall, keep it in the school, you have antivirus A, you have a str you learn to use strong password. T is for trust with caution. You don't trust anything and everything. Because phishing is taking place every time. Card, CAR, you work with confidence and report that's coming. Avoidance, if you find it's not good, avoid it. It's much better. And the R is for reporting. And keep your secret location. Don't reveal your location always through the social networking site. Because that will create a pattern for the child and there could be threat coming through that way also. Children must learn these things. And as a school, I'm sure all of you are having it, you must have AUP, that is the acceptable use policy for the internet or for computers. We have mm -hmm. it. It's important to have it and document it and you must have a proxy server. That's my request. Uh, I'm sure the schools are having it, but if you implement through lectures telling them repeatedly they will also be aware that okay this is the way the world is moving in future perfect i guess i saw many people writing it down so i think it is a good uh, takeaway from this uh, session as well so uh, we have one more question time so uh, if anyone has a question then we can otherwise we can wrap up for lunch <laughs> I, have a, I have a request to the uh, audience here sure, and sure. also uh, Dr. Sa. Uh, these are two things which uh, I've been thinking over this concept since past uh, nine years when I started evangelizing for my iBranch business. Uh, two things I haven't been able to figure out a probable solution for. One is information overload and another is touch screen addiction. Uh, I guess uh, nobody here as well has uh, figured out a solution for because, uh, because of the obvious reasons. Uh, if we can, you know, after this session, if there is one way through edtechreview.in, could collaborate on sharing our thoughts of how we can keep up our kids, uh, not, if not away, then we if, uh, help them manage this information overload and touch screen addiction. Please share your uh, thoughts, please share your ideas, your experiments, your innovations, so that the larger community of students benefit from it. 
absolutely like like I can see you mentioned about you, your practice as well so you, uh, we, people people would love to know about how you have done it so that it relates to them as well for their practices so thanks ragu for bringing that up <laughs> so thank you so much both of you thank you panelists for such an inspiring session we would like to felicitate the panelists on the behalf of edtech review and elc partners the gentleman dr amlan shah mr raghu pande 